Uh, this is going to be a tutorial on Reaper and how to assign instruments and a bunch of other stuff needed to set up your MIDI file for Ocarina of Time. Uh, you're going to need uh, the program Reaper. I'm working with 6.54 right now. I think there's a newer version, but you can use... I think most versions should be fine. So you're going to want to download Reaper. I'll put that in the description. Uh, you're also going to want to download Plog Esferando X64. Uh, this will give you a preview of the instruments used in OOT. That way when you're setting up and assigning your instruments, you can hear it in real time and all that. I'll also put a link to that. Uh, it's an EXE. Install it. And then when you start up Reaper, you'll be able to add it. Uh, I'm also going to include a template file in the download. So we're going to go ahead and open up that template, and this is what it'll look like. This is how you will get started. Okay, I just need to go and remove these markers, though, because I actually don't want those. I want to make sure the template does not have that. Uh, so these tracks are already set up uh, for Bank 22. So when you download that Esperando plugin, and you allow uh, Reaper to use it. Uh, you'll be able to click on these FX buttons and assign whatever instrument you would like to be able to preview. So for example, I used uh, SoundBank 22 and these instruments are already assigned. And you can follow this uh, one for one essentially. So. If we want to listen to SoundBank 22, we can assign Koto to number 0, or track 1. So we click FX, and this little box will come up. You can already see Koto is assigned. Up and down arrows assign different instruments. So there's Koto, that's good. Uh, second one would be Ocarina already done, so on and so forth, and you can assign all 16 of your instruments according to which bank you would like to use. Now, up next I'm gonna show you how to take the MIDI, uh, assign instruments and everything you need to do associated with all that. Um, so you can keep all of these tracks on the left here. These are just blank tracks with pre pre-modified information that's default to vanilla OOT and once you get more familiar with the program you'll be able to alter these things but for now these what what these are assigned as are perfectly fine um all right let's drag and drop a midi that we want to hook up so i'm gonna click left click to this bar right here um let's say we want to do the snow peak one this is a simple one. We're going to drag and drop it to the top line right there. It'll ask you to expand all your tracks. Uh, there's four tracks on this MIDI. It's simple. I say yes. Your mouse wheel can zo like zoom in and out like this. Uh, we want to remove all these markers, by the way. There's a lot of extra stuff, so get rid of all your markers except for these two. These two will be on the template. And you want to keep those. You don't want to have the other ones. Alright, looks like this uses a time this MIDI uses a time signature of 86. Um, so what we can do is we can delete this previous 120. That's fine, because there's no notes there. And when the notes start, our time signature will be 86 right here. Uh, the first thing you want to do with your tracks is remove all the junk info from them. I'll show you what, what I mean by that. So s select whichever track you would like. We'll do this one first. Uh, you do this by double clicking, double left clicking on the track. You can then go to the bottom left here, and this tells you all the lanes that are programmed in. Uh, a big one is the program information and the text events. You want to get rid of all of these on your tracks. So let me do that real quick. I'll start with the text. 
their control down here in this little box. You just hold right click and drag over it and then simply press delete. That gets rid of your text events. We'll do that with program as well. Hold right click, drag over it, select it, hit delete. Okay, and that's good for now. We'll do that for the rest of the tracks real quick. text. Yep, good. Program as well, delete. And the final track, get rid of that. Get rid of text events. Okay. So now our four tracks are clean and ready to assign instruments to, and I'll turn the lo-fi off for this one. Okay, so we're going to assign uh, these uh, lines to tracks now. So you can left click here and uh, press space to do the playback ba on and off. So this, tr this is going to be the first track that we're opening with. Let's just see what it sounds like right now on track three which with this is a bassoon. Okay, that sounds like a bassoon to me. Um, so we could do something like, let's put that, um, hmm. Let's put it on track, the choir, oh, 04. Okay, so zero, one, two, three, four, five. So it'll be track five in here, that one. Let's see what that sounds like. A little lower, but certainly is the choir. So we'll just uh, say that's good there. Um, and you can assign the rest to whatever you'd like and preview it, for example. So this part. That's on the Koto. We'll just keep that there for now. And that's on track three which I suppose is the oboe. So we can more or less just keep these like this. It's it's not what I would pick, but for the sake of the tutorial. Okay, so now that we figured out which tracks we want for which instruments, uh, we're going to want to glue these tracks and set up loop points. And I'll show you how to do that real quick. Uh, so you want to start gluing your tracks. You can zoom in a little bit and uh, just left click on these two. Like let's say, so we want to connect these two. So left click on them. Then after they're both selected, left click, hold shift, left click, shift, left click. You then right click on that and uh, go to glue items. Okay. So this will now be connected officially to track one. And we want to do that with all of these. We just want to glue all of our tracks now. Okay, so now that our tracks are set up, um, these two sections are related to the loop point. Uh, you shouldn't need to touch them at all. I have it set up already uh, for you. Uh, but in case something does get screwed up, this is what it'll look like. Uh, marker 1 should be... ID1 labeled section zero, it should look like this. And this tells the game when to start the sequence. So you want this right at the beginning. And then marker two, which is ID2 labeled section zero, or you can label it section one, doesn't matter. Um, this will be where you loop. So like, let's say I discover a loop point is right here. This is a great loop point. We can just drag that with left click directly to that particular point. And when you export the MIDI, it knows to go to the end. And then once it hits the end, this is where it loops back to. So you're going to have to find your own loop point for that. Um, and if you're searching for a loop point, uh, it's very simple. Just in this bar up here, you just hold left click. Uh, this right side is where it ends and this left side 
is where it begins. So you can test your loot points like that. Like so. Uh, and if you need to clear this, you can just highlight over it, right click. Um, set, uh, remove selection. There it is. It's, it's remove selection, the first option. But yeah, so I want my loop point right here. Um, my tracks are glued, all looking good. Now we need to set up our program changes, our volume, our panning, and all that other stuff. And I'll show you that real quick. Okay, so we'll start with track one here. Um, it's the the first one that plays. So to set everything up, you want to double click, left click on the track itself. Uh, when in here, you're going to want to left click in this area. Press Control A to select all. That's Control A, select all. And then right click, go to event properties. And we want to assign the channel. So the channel is this value here that says track. This is track five. And that's the, also the channel. Set it to track five, hit apply, okay. Uh, and then after that, you want to change the program. So we'll click down here on this little thing, go to program. Same deal, highlight it down in this box because this is where the program is, uh, where the information is being whatever, right? So uh, you select it, right click event properties on this now. Okay, channel five, that's correct. And then the value is going to be one less than the channel every time. So channel five is correct. And then we want the value to be one less, which is four. labeled track four. That's the value. Click OK. And then that's good to go for the program. Now you want to do that with the rest of your tracks as well. So let's do that real quick. Uh, five to four. This one is select all event properties, track four, channel four, apply, program, select program, event properties on that now. Channel four, that's correct. One less, that's three. Okay. Select all with control A, event properties. Channel two, apply. Select the program once again, event properties for program. Channel two, correct, and then value one. And then the last track, select all, control A, event properties, track one, channel one, program, highlight it with right click, event properties, channel one, value zero. There it is. Apply, hit OK. All right. And now that that's all set up, we can do the finishing touches with volume, panning, effects, all that. And I will show you that in a second here. All right. So to set up the rest of this stuff, uh, once again, all these tracks are pre-programmed with like volume and stuff like that. Same deal. You go into the track by double clicking left, uh, bottom left here. You can go into lanes with events. This is everything that's programmed. Uh, typically, you're going to want to touch just volume, hand position, and effects. Those are the three main ones. Uh, let's start with volume. So this will bring up, th this is a grid of basically the volume control. So uh, there is two of these. So the duplicate we can just get rid of um, if there's duplicates. So if you select this with left click and then just simply hit right click, it deletes it. And then if we hold left click, this is our volume. So this is uh, about half volume. Typically a good volume with most MIDI tracks is about three quarters to a little less. So we can try that out right there. It's a decent volume control with this particular track here. And then we can set the pan, get rid of the duplicate once again with right click. Uh, I want this to be directly in the middle, so it would be directly in the middle. 
And then effect level is kind of like a reverb. Uh, this has very high reverb. I want a little bit less, so I'm going to put it a little less than half. That way it doesn't go a little too crazy on me. Okay, so once you've assigned all of that, um, like let's say I set the other tracks with everything else I need, you're probably going to have to listen to it in-game and then, you know, test out stuff, whatever. Uh, we'll name this uh, Test Snow Peak as our save, just to save what we have here. Uh, and then to export the MIDI, we're going to go to Export MIDI Project. Set up with that, whatever your pathing is. I have it just in my downloads folder. Uh, the default export should be good to go. And then you hit OK. It tells you OK. And then you can test your MIDI out in Z64 ROM or whatever else tool you're using. I'll show you in, right here what uh, what we got see if it worked. All right, so after you export uh, your MIDI, um, I did a tutorial on this, how to get MIDI files into your Z64 or ROM folder. So if you need need that, I'll link it as well. But we have our uh, MIDI, so I'm going to put it into my uh, project. Sequence ID, uh, I'm going to put it over Ice Cavern, We use, which is 58. We use sound font 22. Okay, test Snow Peak. Let's build and see what we got. Yep, sounds right. So you would want to adjust the instruments, your panning, your volume. You can adjust your tracks and all that, but... That is how you get... <laughs> Reaper MIDI's assigned instruments ready to use for Z64 ROM. 